Hello everyone, Christina Werner here. Welcome to another video on my YouTube channel. In today's video, I wanted to answer a question that I get fairly often every once in a while from crafters who have seen me use the Yuli watercolor paints in videos and they buy the paints themselves and then they're at a loss for what to do if they don't want to do lots of free style painting, like just painting on their own. They need a little bit of guidance or just something that they can use as um, like a starting point for their painting. So I'm going to be showing you something you can do with all of those dot cards that you may have uh, picked up from Yuli. And I'm using some black watercolor paper um, because that's what really lets these colors shine in my opinion. I'm using a stamp and stencil mat and I'm gonna have that in my Misty holding my black watercolor paper while I do some stamping. I'm using Simus' Stamps Mixed Alphas Stamp for this first uh, background. I'm actually going to be stamping three backgrounds and showing you the painting of all three today. This is a similar technique that, to one I've shown in the past, but I thought I would show you the same technique but in three different, uh, three different backgrounds so you can kind of get an idea of what types of backgrounds you can use when you do this technique. I'm using some oxide ink. This is the color Hickory Smoke. And I'm stamping that down onto my black watercolor paper. Now I chose this black watercolor paper in particular for a reason. I do have two different brands of black watercolor paper. And one of them is very, very delicate. And you can't really put it on a sticky mat like this because it will tear when you go to pull it up. This one from Royal Talons, uh, this is their Van Gogh black watercolor paper. It handles any sort of sticky situation really well. It holds up to masking tape and anything like that, which I think is great when you're going to be painting. So I, the second background I'm using is the Geo Leaf background from Simus' Stamp, and I'm stamping that in the Hickory Smoke Oxide ink again. Basically, I'm stamping each one of these patterns onto a dark surface, and I'm using, um, you know, pigment ink, something that will show up on that dark background. I'm now using a stamp from Paper Tray, and I'm going to stamp that on the black watercolor paper as well. So what this does is it's going to give me a guide for something to trace and paint over the top. It works great for all of these watercolors because the nature of these pearlescent mica metallic paints is that they are opaque. So it's going to completely cover up any of the design underneath. I'm opening one of my dot cards and I have many that I've received over the years. This is the oceans eight dot card. And I'm just going to pick out some colors and uh, I'm actually going to tape it down to my work surface so that the card stays put while I'm painting. And then I'm going to put drops of water on the colors I'm using. And then I'll just be picking up the color with a paintbrush and painting directly over top of this design that I've already stamped on my black watercolor paper. This is a great way to get patterns and images uh, on a dark surface. Um, and you get to paint it any color you'd like. You could also do this with uh, just singular images. It doesn't have to be a background. Uh, it works great. Even large greetings. How fun would it be as a greeting? So I'm going to paint this and turn on some music and speed up the video.
I finished up my first background and I love those colors, the purple, greens, teals, blue. I think it just looks so beautiful. So I'm actually going to set this aside to dry completely and I'm going to move on to my second background. Now the one I'm going to be painting next is that mixed alphas background and I'm going to use the nested round hearts from Simon Says Stamp and I'm actually going to be die cutting this heart eventually. So instead of painting the entire background, I'm just tracing out a generous area outside of the largest heart die and then I'll only be painting the interior area. So here we are, I've got a new dot card and I'm gonna continue painting. So I finished all three backgrounds and I think they just look fantastic. You can really see the color shift on this one as I bend it in the light. It looks really, really cool. You get multiple colors out of that one. This one also has a little bit of a shift when you kind of bend it in the light. And then this one has that beautiful transition between all of those colors. I think it turned out beautifully. So I ran through the mixed alphas background with my nested hearts, a nested rounded hearts a uh, die, not a stamp. It was a die. And now I'm going to be creating three greetings using three different stamp sets and their coordinating dies. Um, I've got a couple stamp sets from Simon Says Stamp and one from Waffle Flower. I'll have them linked down below. And I'm stamping each greeting in some obsidian black ink from Altenew. This is a black pigment ink. And then I'm coating it in some clear embossing powder. This is icicle embossing powder from British Monroe. This is just going to give a nice shiny finish on top of my black greetings. So I tapped off the excess and then hit that with my heat tool. And this is super easy to know when it's melted because you can see how dark it gets right over the words. I then used each stamp set's coordinating dies to cut out my greetings. And then it's just as easy as assembling my cards. So each card is an A2 size, so four and a quarter by five and a half. And then I've placed my painted background pieces on some foam adhesive. And I've also added that foam adhesive to the back of each greeting. So I'm just placing these on with some tweezers, making sure it's in a good spot. And these cards are very, very simple as is. All of the technique and the thought went into painting the backgrounds, but it wasn't just enough to keep it like this. So I'm actually going to take a black marker. I'm using a black Copic multi-liner, but you could use any black marker or pen. And I'm just adding some dash lines around uh, the different die cuts or backgrounds, I should say, for each of these cards. This just adds a little bit of detail, um, just gives a little bit of a more fine detail since everything on these is very bold. So here are all three of my cards for this video. I hope this gives you an idea of something you can do with any of your opaque pearlescent paints you might have in your stash. I think they're so beautiful and they look particularly nice on a, on a dark surface. So like I said before, I don't think of just backgrounds, but maybe singular images or flowers or balloons would look amazing on a black surface like this. Thanks so much for watching today. I'll be back very soon with another video. Mm -hmm.